all the CDI players uh, before 1994, before the game controllers were released, came with uh, those remote controls. This is the remote control from the Philips 210. Also the Grundig, as far as I know, came with uh, one of those, but uh, yeah, I only bought the system, it didn't came with a ro remote control. The remote control from uh, the Philips 205 was a lot bigger than this one and it also had a thumbstick right on the top and four action buttons which were around the thumbstick and it also had all the buttons that are normal on a, a remote control but this one is called the CDI Commander and just from the looks I think it actually looks like the phasers that they had in Star Trek The Next Generation for some kind of reason it reminds me of that okay but anyways on the top over here we have the infrared sensor, then we have three action buttons, button 1, button 2 and again button 1. So it's actually uh, made for left and right handers. Then here we have the direction pad and one thing that uh, not many people mention but I think it is pretty cool is that it recognizes pressure differences which means that if you apply a little bit of pressure to each side the cursor moves slowly and if you apply more pressure in this direction then the cursor moves a lot faster. Okay, underneath this cover you have the normal features for a remote control so you have pa uh, play, pause, stop, you can switch uh, between the tracks, volume control and also button to switch between TV and CDI. Now, for uh, very unusual for a remote control, this one requires uh, three AA batteries. Normally, a remote control only requires two AA batteries, but for some kind of reason, this one needs three. Okay, and now, next, I'm gonna show you all the devices or accessories that I have for the Philips CDI. First accessory that we have is one of the joypad controllers that were released for the CDI. Just from the design it really looks like a Genesis controller. So you have your D-pad on the left side, then three action buttons, button 1, button 2 and the third button is actually button 1 and 2 together. Not many uh, games um, supported this feature but a couple of games uh, yeah, with this button you could activate some special moves or special attacks and for the most part other games uh, use that button for let's say to go back to the uh, main menu or anything else. Then underneath here you have a little switch with three settings N, 1 and 2. This is actually um, the speed button, it also mentions speed over here and this is for the cursor so if you have a cursor in a game or in a, a program or whatever then it sets the speed of the cursor n is normal then one is very slow and two is very fast so it decides how or it's the setting how fast the cursor moves um, in a game or a program and I actually have to say it is really comfortable to play a game with this controller or actually the, the controller itself is uh, yeah, very comfortable. I actually like it a lot more than the original Sega Mega Drive controller or Sega Genesis controller. Now, this was the first controller. They also released the second controller. This one, the touchpad controller. And this is this one right here. A lot of people say that the design of this controller looks a lot like the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom controller and yeah from the design it really looks like they uh, copied the Super Nintendo controller but actually it is a copy of the PC controller this one the Graphis, Graphis PC gamepad. This controller also came with this little stick. If you want, you can screw it in into the um, D-pad. I actually don't like it because, yeah, I really like it a lot more 
without the stick. Also it feels very comfortable to hold and to play with this controller. Over here you have uh, again the D-pad, then you have four action buttons, this time button one, two times on the controller, then button two and of course also the button one and two together. On the bottom here you also have a speed um, switch, this time only with two settings, normal and very fast for the cursor and you also have a switch on the top over here and this switch is actually to um, reverse the controls of the D-pad. One quick thing that I also wanted to mention about the joypads is that not only Philips uh, released joypads for the Philips CDI, also a couple of third-party developers released uh, some joypads for the CDI and also one joystick was released for the CDI by a third-party developer. They are pretty hard to find but this is also something that um, you can get for the Philips CDI. Just wanted to mention it. Now one thing that I also wanted to talk about is again the remote control or the CDI commander. A lot of people say that this uh, controller is the worst controller of all times and it is a pain in the ass to play uh, games with the CDI commander or well, let's say with this CDI controller. Now I would maybe agree with those people but only in the year 1993. From 1991 when the CDI was released in America to 1993 the system wasn't sold as a video game console like I mentioned before it was a multimedia device and this remote control was not made to play games like driving games or action games or jump and runs or whatever. So the CDI Commander was actually only built as a pointing device so you can uh, move through options or menus and uh, move the cursor around and not for games. I just wanted to mention it because a lot of people are uh, complaining about this controller today because they buy a CDI uh, player and uh, mostly this remote control or in the case of the 205 the big remote control and also the 450 which has the design of a video game console came with a controller that a lot of people call the spoon controller and it wasn't an infrared controller, it was a wired controller and it was more or less the same design as the CDI Commander. But like I said, in today's days and since 1994, Philips changed their tactics and they released game controllers. So don't bitch around about the CDI Commander or the other controllers. If you want to play games, then please buy one of those controllers. They are not that expensive on eBay and you still can find them. So this was just one thing that I wanted to mention about the CDI Commander. It wasn't made to play games in the first place. So please keep in mind, if you want to play games on the CDI, then try to get one of those uh, gamepad controllers. Okay, but now we continue with the other accessories that I have for the CDI. The next one is this one, the CDI tracker ball, or actually it is a trackball controller. And the trackball controller was also more or less a predecessor of the mouse and yeah it is really a cool trackball it is very well built and yeah it works perfectly you have also or well, let's say it was also made for left and right handers so you have button one button two and again button one Except for that, it, it has no other features or anything. This wasn't the only trackball that was released for the CDI. There was also the roller controller. This was a lot bigger than this one. And it was basically made for children. So it made pretty stable. And it also had the looks of a, uh, of a toy, more or less. And yeah, I don't have it. And I also don't wanna get it in the near future or anything, but yeah, this is the 
uh, roller controller. Okay, but now let's continue with the next accessory that I have. And that is the CDI mouse. Also, the CDI system had a mouse and yeah, came with a mouse pad. And over here we have mouse. Also, again, button one, button two. Nothing really uh, exciting. It's basically a normal mouse. Over here you have a holder. Uh, for the mouse or mouse garage you can also say and yeah it's a pretty good mouse it works perfectly and it's actually also a lot of fun to play games with the mouse uh, it's more or less designed or well, let's say it works best with point and click adventures with some light gun shooters if you don't have the light gun and yeah it's a, a pretty good accessory for the CDI. Okay, but now let's come to the next one that I have. And that is the light gun for the PC, uh, for the PC, <laughs> for the Philips CDI. It is called the Peacekeeper and it was released in two designs. This one with the game Mad Dog McCree. It was also sold separately without uh, a game. And this is also one accessory that not many people mention. I'm a huge light gun fan. I love light guns and light gun games. And one interesting thing is that, okay, inside we have the game, of course, Mad Dog McCree. And one interesting thing is that it comes with its own um, infrared sensor, which you can put on top of the uh, TV or below it. And this means that uh, it doesn't matter if you have a 50 Hz, a 60 Hz, a 100 Hz, an LCD uh, TV, a plasma TV, or a projector TV, or anything. It only works with the, the, um, with the infrared receiver. And this is the infrared receiver. Over here you have a green LED which shows you when the, the um, infrared receiver is turned on. And yeah, the light gun is also for a light gun, nothing really special. I mean, it has the look of a revolver. Over here you have a button to turn on and off the receiver. Then here you have the action button two and action button one. It is really a very cool light gun. It works very good. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that when you calibrate the light gun in the game, um, after you calibrated the light gun, you can't really change positions. So if you're sitting on the couch or anything, uh, then you have to stay in this place because if you move to the left side, to the right side, or if you're standing in front of the TV or whatever, and you make one step forward or backwards, then you have to recalibrate the weapon or let's say the light gun because uh, yeah it loses its precision also the light gun came with a lot of cable or let's say with long cable one cable goes from the uh, receiver to the CDI to the uh, port on the front and the other cable is of course for the uh, for the light gun the cable is huge so uh, yeah it's actually one good thing that it came with a with very long cables so you don't have to stand real close to the TV or whatever. Okay, now to the next accessory that I have and that is the CDI Internet Starter Kit. I also wanted to show you the modem and anything that came with this starter kit. And in here, this is the starter CD, this is the manual, and this is the modem. Now I've mentioned that it is a 14.4 uh, kilobyte modem. And in 1996, when this uh, starter kit was released, a 14.4 kilobyte modem was actually a very slow modem because uh, everybody else already used the 28.8 kilobyte modem but they sticked with the 14.4 kilobyte modem 
because uh, the 28.8 kilobyte modem was not supported by uh, a couple of CDI players or it actually uh, came to a lot of issues and they decided to release this 14.4 um, kilobyte modem so that every owner of a CDI can actually use this modem. So and this is actually an idea that I think is actually pretty nice because uh, yeah, they wanted to make everybody happy and not say that hey you have to use the 14.4 but uh, the other one has, uh, has the opportunity or can actually use a 28.8 kilobyte modem. And yeah, but in the end if you want to make everybody happy there are always some drawbacks or in the end those ideas will uh, ruin a system or anything and with the CDI um, internet starter kit you can uh, you could go online you could view web pages browse through the internet and send and receive um, emails but the biggest problem was because of the 14.4 kilobyte modem it was pretty slow this was the main reason why it wasn't very popular and also if a website had pictures like GPEG or uh, GIF images then it took a long time to load those pictures so it was a pretty slow um, yeah, online ability that you had. Also another thing that I find very interesting is that it also came with a splitter cable and I looked it up in the manual why this uh, splitter cable came with the starter kit and the reason for that is the 450 only had one controller port on the front it didn't have the input 2 on the back or the serial IO on the back so in order to go online you had to put in the splitter cable and connect the modem to um, the second port and the first port was also used for the um, controller or the remote control that came with the um, with the 450. Also another device, I don't know if it actually was released, was also uh, a CDI commander for the 450 since it didn't have an infrared receiver and yeah this CDI commander came with a uh, infrared receiver so that you also had an infrared uh, remote control for the 450 but I've only seen some pictures of drawings and I've never seen the actual um, accessory. Okay, the last um, accessory that I have and of course yeah, the cables to connect it to the telephone line and the last accessory that I have for the CDI is the CDI keyboard controller or key controller and yeah <clears throat> like it's already mentioned on the uh, on the front of the box it is for the internet so that you actually can write uh, emails or switch or go to different websites as far as I know it also um, was used uh, for the encyclopedia that I mentioned <coughs> to look up some uh, words or whatever. Just open it. I've never used it also the internet uh, starter kit I got pretty recently so I didn't, have, uh, I didn't even have time to uh, try the internet starter kit uh, out and yeah but this is the, the keyboard for the CDI it looks unused and I actually think that the, the former owner of the uh, keyboard didn't actually use it or anything so it's like new and of course here are the, the cables and it also Funny thing, it also came with uh, a splitter cable, I guess also because of the uh, 450 to connect the control, uh, the keyboard and maybe the mouse or that you could actually go online with um, the CDI and also use the keyboard. Last thing that I wanted to mention about 
the internet kit or the internet starter kit is that I've never used it or tried it out. Uh, mostly because number one, uh, there is no reason why I want to try it out. I mean, since the, uh, the internet would be very slow. And number two, the seller from which I bought it told me that he tried it out a couple of years ago and it still worked, but he recently tried it out and yeah, it looks like the server doesn't exist anymore or anything, so there's no support for the CDI internet. And yeah, for me as a collector, it's a cool piece of accessory, but I don't really have any use for it anymore. So, but anyways, as a collector, I think it's a very cool accessory. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at some of the games that I have.